Everybody's talking about it all over the world. They'll say, well, wait a minute, we're supposed to be protecting you from Russia. But why are you paying billions of dollars to Russia for energy? Why are countries in NATO, mainly Germany, having a large percentage of the energy is paid you know, to Russia and, and taken care of by Russia? Now, if you look at it, Germany is a captive of Russia because they supply, they got rid of their coal, they got rid of their nuclear getting so much of the oil and gas from Russia. I think it's something that NATO has to look at. I think it's very inappropriate. You and I agree that it's inappropriate. I don't know what you can do about it now, but it certainly doesn't seem to make sense that they pay billions of dollars to Russia, and now we have to defend them against Russia. Germany is just paying a little bit over 1%, whereas the United States in actual numbers is paying 4.2% of a much larger GDP. So I think that's inappropriate also. You know, we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting everybody, and yet we're paying a lot of money to protect. Now, this has been going on for decades. This has been brought up by other presidents, but other presidents never did anything about it, because I don't think they understood it, or they just didn't want to get involved. But I have to bring it up, because I think it's very unfair to our country, it's very unfair to our taxpayers. And I think that these countries have to step it up, not over a 10-year period, they have to step it up immediately. Corruption, because the corruption is massive. Now, when Biden's son walks away with millions of dollars from Ukraine, and he knows nothing, and they're paying him millions of dollars, that's corruption. When Biden's son walks out of China with $1.5 billion in a fund, and the biggest fund in the world can't get money out of China, and he's there for one quick meeting, and he flies in on Air Force Two, uh, I think that's a horrible thing. Where did this Russian witch hunt that you think they really want to perpetrate? Where did it start? How come it started? It was all this nonsense. It was a hoax. It was a total hoax. It was a media hoax and a Democrat hoax. Where did it start? Okay, I think that one of the great crimes committed is Hillary Clinton deleting 33,000 emails after Congress sends her a subpoena. Think of that. You can't even do that in a civil case. You can't get rid of evidence like that. She deleted 33,000 emails after, not before, after receiving a subpoena from the U.S. Congress. I think the military aid continue? Can you assure that it will continue in the future? Well, we're working with Ukraine, and we want other countries to work with Ukraine. When I say work, I'm referring to money. They should put up more money. We put up a lot of money. I gave you anti-tank busters that, frankly, President Obama was sending you pillows and cheats. And I gave you anti-tank busters, and a lot of people didn't want to do that, but I did it. And I really hope that Russia, because I really believe that President Putin would like to do something, I really hope that you and President Putin get together and can solve your problem. That would be a tremendous achievement. When you take a look at what's happening in the media today, the whole party is taken over by the left. And uh, thank you very much. My phone numbers have gone up. But I don't want it to go up for this reason. When they look and when you see what's happening, people are really angry at Democrats. They're really angry at the Democrat Party. And things like, as an example, drug pricing, getting drugs down. Things like gun safety, infrastructure. The Democrats can't talk about that because they can take it over by a radical group of people. And Nancy Pelosi, as far as I'm concerned,
Russia, Russia, Russia. It was all bullshit. You used the words. So you said you went to Delaware State, but you forgot the name of the car. You didn't go to Delaware State. You graduated either the lowest or almost the lowest in your class. Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. Uh, because you know what? There's nothing smart about you. 47 years you've done that. Let's add this to bed. If you would have had, let me just tell you something, Jack. If you would have had the charge of what I was put through, I had to close the greatest economy in the history of our country. It will be a totally different country. Ultimately, it will fail. It will fail. It can't be. Economically, it can't be. We're going into a depression. And I'm very good at what you do. We are going into a depression. A depression. I say this to the media. This will be the greatest catastrophe, one of the greatest catastrophes in the history of our country. That's how serious it is. They also think I'm trying to steal the election, just the opposite. I want the fair results. in trouble something has to happen and if it doesn't happen and if we don't have smart leadership you're going to end up with no world the world is going to be blown to pieces we have stupid people now running our country the world is going to be blown to pieces in april of 2022 the war began on uh, february 24th 2022. in april there was a a uh, peace outreach by Putin and by Zelensky. And they actually signed a peace agreement. And at that time, and, the, uh, and Boris Johnson was dispatched by the White House to sabotage that agreement. The Russians were acting in good faith after signing that agreement. They were actually withdrawing troops from the area of Kiev. It was clear that they were operating in good faith at that point, and we were not operating in good faith. We should be trying to settle this war through diplomacy. Since then, there have been 350,000 Ukrainian kids that have been killed, and we have turned that nation into a proxy war between a pawn, a proxy war between Russia and, and the United States. And by the way, the, you know, we were told this was a humanitarian exercise. If it was humanitarian, it means reducing bloodshed and shortening the conflict. But when President Biden was asked, why are we over there? He said, for regime change of Vladimir Putin. The Russians have agreed to this solution twice. Once they agreed to the Minsk Accords, and you know, they, the Minsk Accords, which you know, were, were agreed to by, uh, by Germany, by France and by Russia, so uh, maintain Donbass as part of the Ukraine. By the way, Ukraine, the Donbass voted to leave the Ukraine 90 to 10, 90 percent to 10 percent. Were elections last year? No, in the early elections, but, and Putin refused to take them. So Putin did not. But, but let me let me finish this. The the Donbass or the Minsk Accords, which which all those countries agreed on. And then in 2019, Zelensky ran for president for the first time. He's a comedian and actor with no political experience. He won on a peace platform with 70% of the vote. His campaign was, I will sign them and ratify the Minsk Accords if I'm elected. And as soon as he got elected, he pivoted. Why? Because of US pressure from the neocons from Victoria Newland and the neocons in the White House, they did not want peace. And because of pressure from ultra-nationalists within the Ukraine who said they were going to kill him. When my uncle was president and, and the, his military apparatus wanted him to go to war with Vietnam, with Laos, with Cuba, with the Soviet Union during the 
heroin crisis. He said, you have to put yourself in the shoes of your adversary. If we're going to have peace, you have to be able to put yourself in the shoes of the adversary and see the world from their perspective and recognize their legitimate security concerns. We promised in 1992 that we would, after the Russians made a huge concession to us of leaving 400,000 troops out of Germany, allowing us to co consolidate East and West Germany under NATO control, which was an adversary army to them. And they said, the one thing we want from you is that you will not move NATO one inch to the east. And President or Secretary of State Baker said at that time famously, we will not move NATO one inch to the east. Since then, we have moved it a thousand miles to the east and 14 countries, and we put Aegis missile systems in Romania and Poland right near Russia's border. Arizona's new red sand Or a liquid car down Arizona's new red sand Tastes of honey from a fire While we hold hands hey. Cause I'm a food child Oh no Cause I'm a food Prices are up 18 percent. Airline prices are up 41 percent. Taxes are higher than ever. Interest rates for mortgages and car loans have put the American dream out of reach for countless millions of families. Meanwhile, in the Joe Biden economy, real wages are down 25 months in a row. Nobody's ever seen anything like it. In fact, it's the longest streak. The typical American family this Memorial Day weekend has lost an average of nearly $7,000 a year in purchasing power because of Joe Biden's failed presidency. You could take the worst five presidents in history, and they haven't done the damage that Joe Biden has done. Just to get them up. But help is on the way. On day one, I will begin to reverse the disastrous impacts of Biden's inflation and rebuild the greatest economy in the history of the world. Would you give Ukraine weapons and funding if you were? I would sit down. Let, let me just put it in a nicer way. If I'm president, I will have that war settled in one day. And within 24 hours, that war will be settled. It'll be over. Uh, I don't think in terms of winning and losing. I think in terms of getting it settled so we stop killing all these people and breaking out. <laughs> Mr. So President, can I just follow up on that because that's a really important Excuse statement me, let me that you just, just follow made up. there. Can you say if you want Ukraine or Russia to win this war? I want everybody to stop dying. They're dying. Russians and Ukrainians. I want them to stop dying. And I'll have that done. I'll have that done in 24 hours. I'll have it done. You need the power of the president. Say office. this, I want Europe to put up more money because they're in for 20 billion, we're in for 170, yeah, and they should be, and they should, should equalize. They have plenty of money. 
They should equalize. I got with NATO, but when I sat you, down, I got them right to put up Mr. hundreds President. of billions of dollars that they weren't paying under Obama and Bush and all of these other presidents. That's why they're, they're able to help them fight the war because of the money I got. But, but I let's want talk Europe. About what's to, happening in Ukraine, excuse me, Mr. I President. want Europe to put up more money because they're laughing at us. They think we're a bunch of jerks. We're spending $170 billion for faraway land, and they're right next door to that land, and they're in for 20. I don't think so. When it comes to what's happening there, when you were in office, you said that you respected President Putin. Do yeah, you I still do. respect him today? Uh, he made a tremendous mistake. He made, he made he was a smart guy, you know. I remember I said he was smart, she was smart. They what said was his he mistake? said President Xi. They want China. to take away my right. freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. They want you silent. And I am the only one that can save this nation because you know they're not coming after me, they're coming after you, and I just happen to be standing in their way, and I will never be moved. On November 5th, 2024, justice will be done. We will take back our country, and we will make America great again. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you, thank you very much. Great job, thank you.